We're living in a time in history where there is so much progress and innovation, it's almost too much to keep up with. Robots serving food, flying cars, advancements in carbon sequestration, precision satellite mapping, replaceable organs, the continuous rise of artificial intelligence, and so on. These are but a few examples from other sectors that are likely not represented in this room today, yet that are working hard to tackle these many issues, some of which relate to vertical farming. Access to much of this innovation is not a human right, whereas access to food security is, and not a privilege, a privilege reserved for the few. Without food and water, after all, we'd cease to exist. From our company's perspective, the sector over this past year has collectively achieved a great deal, also in broader controlled environment agriculture, so things like high-tech uh, glass houses. Despite the uphill challenges uh, the sector continues to face um, following a lot of the failings from the previous uh, years, predominantly in the US. But moving forward often means looking back. So I wanted to share a few views of what we have observed. Globally, I think the lessons learned across the sector are the importance of scientific and experienced grower-led input for, for both small and large-scale growers. Technology, no matter how good, will only get you so far. For tech developers and manufacturers like us, as well as systems integrators and, and other archetypes, the great, greatest leaps I have seen have been in the application of system-derived data, uh, at, at least for the more advanced integrated systems, which is still few and far between, but on the up. Um, the level of collaboration has also been encouraging in some areas, especially in added value technologies such as cold plasma seed treatment, improving germination rates, and uh, basic automation to upgrade lower tech facilities, which are important for emerging markets. No, no market across MENA is the same. A continuing, lesson, uh, a continuing lesson that continues year on year, but is perhaps worsening is investment in small-scale farms, typically in urban areas. These clearly offer benefits such as training, awareness, jobs, and education, but do not make a dent in, in a sufficient dent in security targets by a long shot. And that's food security targets, obviously. Scale is what we need. The inconvenient truth with this is that to achieve true food security, meaning price parity, and to have, a, have any chance of meeting governmental goals, projects need to be significantly bigger, outside of cities, technologically advanced, integrated, and through data, able to become more productive over time. Clearly, this is partly a sales pitch, as this is our mantra as a company. I use the term inconvenient because there is still a natural and perhaps rational hesitancy to invest in large-scale projects because of past failures, some of which I've mentioned in the US, with many types of funders. Uh, a, believing, uh, believing that there is no innovation, that has been, sorry, there has been no innovation since such failures, and B, that small-scale pilots, which still take years, are a logical way to step in. Large-scale farms, on the other hand, reap the benefits of economies of scale, greater purchasing power through scale, lower capex per square meter, and so on. A vertical future, for example, a farm of 2,000 square meters in production capacity compared to one of 20,000 square meters is up to 50% cheaper in terms of capex, has a significantly lower cost of goods sold per kilogram of product produced, and operating costs um, are significantly lower as a percentage of revenue. The UAE has caught on to these lessons faster than most, and over the past year since this, since this last conference deserve significant praise from our sector. When we embrace food security, we sow the seeds of hope for future generations, and the UAE's actions compared to others globally on a per capita basis but also in terms of overall ambition, have not only, not, not only considered to demonstrate global leadership, but the level of interest and investment in food security can, continues to grow, at least from an outsider's perspective. Demonstrable of this is Food Tech Valley, as one example, 
outspoken governmental support on the international stage stretching back years, and ambitious targets, and more recently the partnership announced between Plenty and Mourarid, and apologies for um, the very poor pronunciation there. These are all great examples in a part of the world where food and water security solutions are most needed. The continued actions exemplified over this past year in the UAE must be continued. One example of this and why scale is important uh, and to talk about the, the um, task at hand um, goes back to referencing plenty, for example. Uh, they plan to go live in several years at a cost of $130 million for their first facility. And this only covers an estimated low single digit of MENA's total strawberry consumption, not accounting for population increases in the interim. This project is clearly a massive step forward and something that we should all admire, but at the same time illustrates the quantum of investment required to truly achieve food security at price parity and not just for sp specific crops. A mixed bag of funders that are willing to deviate from traditional funding models exist here in the UAE and broader MENA region, where in other countries that same kind of amb ambition is broadly lacking for various reasons. Family offices with rich histories, sovereign wealth funds and infrastructure funds are the most likely aligned sources of capital. And we simply cannot wait. At scale, vertical farms take at least one to two years to develop and or come online, then a further few years to, to make a measurable impact. Each passing day where there is inaction makes our combined task as a sector and more broadly, um, more difficult and harder considering climate change and particularly water insecurity for the MENA region. Globally, in tandem, we also need to broaden out the capabilities and use cases for vertical farming technologies. And some of this is already happening through projects fo focused on uh, forestation or reforestation, farmer and other use cases, although food really must come first. But the biggest challenge for the future in this sector, not just in the UAE, but globally, is to focus on the genetics and science that unlock the keys to the six, the, the six key com commodity crops that provide humans with 75% of our annual energy intake. These can all be grown in vertical farms for sure, um, even uh, in low-tech vertical farms, but not at a price anywhere close to current commodity pricing. And true food security exists at, the level, uh, at this uh, price level. I'll close by saying that it is an honor to be here again this year amongst so many people who are trying to achieve the same goals and doing so with such passion and increasingly greater levels of innovation. I wish you all a great conference. Um, again, thank the TAB Group um, for um, allowing us to sponsor this event and uh, to our distinguished guests, excellencies, hosts and organizers. Um, if you have time, please visit our stand and meet our team, and um, we'd love to have a conversation.